Hey folks, my name is Jason Spies and I travel across these great states talking to small business owners, CEOs, policymakers, musicians and mentors about making money, giving back and balancing life. I find out how they prioritize professional and personal time while still making money. Yes indeed, our guests are real heavyweights in understanding business and life. So get ready to relax, learn a little bit, and get a cup of coffee ready because my name is Jason Spies and this is Coffee and Capitalism Radio. Sitting on a million, sitting on it every day. Can't make no money giving you stuff Welcome away. Welcome to Coffee and Capitalism Radio, heard now? on the Crude Life Media Network. My name is Jason Spies like and I'm your host today. Thank you folks for pulling up a stool and joining the conversation. Coffee and Capitalism brings you exclusive interviews and distinct content from leaders who are driving our economy. From CEOs to small business owners to mentors, Coffee and Capitalism is a leader in innovation, ideas, and inspiration. Coffee and Capitalism is about making money and giving back, learning the fine art of balancing work and family life, all while prioritizing your time, learning the true roots of capitalism. My name is Jason Spies. I'm your host. And once again, I would like to welcome you to Coffee and Capitalism Radio. And here's what we got on today's menu. Kayla Sprayberry from Madison Capital describes who their investors are looking for in today's economy, from energy to banking to medical. Then we talk with Dr. Jerry Bailey. Unique thing happening in the world of energy right now. Dr. Bailey's departure from ExxonMobil didn't last long as he came out of quote-unquote retirement to join an advisory board, and they're using a combination of energy development and blockchain. Check that out a little bit later on. Jerry Bailey. Also, Chase Broussard with Dealmakers. Love this thing here, where he found a niche in business focusing on sales and brokering. How many of us need a sales department? Well, Chase is one of those guys that figured out a way to make a living brokering deals and making sales happen. And then we talk with Rob Ryan, Roaring Lions Ranch. Many people remember him from the 1990s. He invented the local area network. He is the true inventor of the internet. He's a tech billionaire from the 1990s. And right now he's raising entrepreneurs on the Roaring Lions Ranch. A little bit later on in the program, Rob Ryan, billionaire entrepreneur, Roaring Lions Ranch. I'd like to thank you folks for pulling up a stool, joining the conversation here on Coffee and Capitalism Radio. My name is Jason Spies, and this is Coffee and Capitalism Radio, heard on the Crude Life Media Network. Over the past few months, I've told you about how unbelievable Hatch Coaching is. Well, don't just take my word for it. Listen to what Greg Tavine of Emerging Prairies has to say about Hatch Coaching. I got to watch him give a talk at TEDx Brookings, and I saw him come into his own where he shared uncomfortable things from his past in a way that created a teaching environment. And Eric's somebody that could easily lead with all he's accomplished, and it's a long list. To find out more information about Hatch Coaching or to have Eric Hatch come to your company or event, visit coachingwithhatch.com. That's coachingwithhatch.com. Welcome back to Coffee and Capitalism Radio, heard in the Crude Life Media Network. My name is Jason Spies, and I'm your host today. Up next, Kayla Sprayberry with Madison Capital. Madison Capital is an equipment and vehicle financing company. We're actually a direct lender, not a brokerage. So we work with companies um, from your uh, your service companies all the way to vendors, manufacturers, to help them attain and sell the equipment and uh, vehicles that they need for their operation. Kayla uh, Sprayberry with Madison Capital on the line with us here. And who is your customer? I, I imagine anybody looking to get into the the oil and gas. Uh, market through finances, but do you guys have like a pre-qualification or certain specific people that you are looking for? Yeah, we do. Madison Capital has been around for 43 years, and uh, they've really created what they call their core their core client, and that consists of businesses that have been uh, in business at least one year. We really like two years, so we want those good foundational uh, companies. We work with A and B Credit. And then also coming in companies that are just looking to grow. We want companies that are looking to grow, expand their market share, and really develop their company. Um, so that's kind of the basis of, of what we look for. 
You know, I imagine it's pretty interesting over the last few years. I've talked to a number of different um, CEOs, whether it be from, you know, like a Harold Hamm from Continental or uh, John Gibson from One Oak, who's on the natural gas side of things. I'm not saying those names to name drop. I'm saying them because they're leaders in the industry. And they've mentioned or flat out told me in interviews, they're rewriting their business plans. And when you rewrite your business plan in the oil and gas world, a lot of other industries have to rewrite their business plans too, eventually, if not today, tomorrow, or the next day. If you guys are loaning money and getting involved in the finance side of things, I can imagine that it has been, the last five years have been very, very interesting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were big uh, up until 15, everything dropped out especially in the oil and gas sector, and it's a rebuilding time. And a lot of those companies downsize their equipment and their fleets, um, and they're coming back and they're rebuilding, but they're having to do it differently. The tax laws have changed, the environment's changed, the price of equipment has gone up, and, you know, a lot of people were subsidizing with rental equipment, but rental equipment can only take you so far for so long. Um, And what we do is we're able to come in and help people create a game plan for structured scheduled growth. Was there any trend that you saw that uh, worked to your guys' advantage? I know everything is individualized and it's so hard to blanket things like this, but during the during the downturn, you know, fracking sand kind of got used as an example as a way that uh, people were cutting costs and, 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 you know, and when in reality, pretty much everybody except probably the railroad sharpened their, their pencil. Um, we're entering a new age of oil. Uh, a lot of people have downsized or right-sized, if you will. Um, we're still hovering around prices to where they are. The global economy is starting to happen more and more, whether Continental is shipping out oil to China or China is investing in West Virginia's energy infrastructure. Are you seeing anything there when it comes to kind of as we right-size things? Is there any trends that you're seeing from your perspective towards the financing as we move forward in the oil and gas industry? Well, I mean, PE has always been a big thing in the oil and gas sector, and PE has had to change their margins some. Banks have had to tighten up, and so uh, people are looking for those different options, and I feel like we're one of those options that we can actually, they can look at, and they can have flexibility to actually operate their company. Um, You know, they're not getting, they need things that are not tying up their AR, not tying up um, or blanketing them where they're having trouble getting operational loans. So they really need diversification in the financial sector to keep things balanced. To listen to the full-length interview with Kayla Sprayberry from Madison Capital, visit our website, thecrudelife.com. That's thecrudelife.com. Coffee and Capitalism Radio is part of the Crude Life Media Network. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter. All those social media links are available at thecrudelife.com. My name is Jason Spies, and this is Coffee and Capitalism Radio, heard on the Crude Life Media Network. Music on today's program is written and performed by the Moody River Band. The Moody River Band has a new album hitting the downloadable streets on April 1st. For more information on the Moody River Band, their links, and their music, visit thecrudelife.com. That's thecrudelife.com and click on the Musicians tab. This is the Moody River Band. Meridian Energy Group of Belfield, North Dakota, is building the most technologically advanced oil refinery on the planet, the Davis Refinery, a project designed to achieve emission control levels the industry has never seen before. The Davis Refinery, working for North Dakota. MeridianEnergyGroupInc.com. Jason Spies, the most trusted voice in the Bakken. Let's bring in Jason Spies, who is a multimedia journalist in North Dakota. Jason, what's your thought on this? My dad always listens to Jason Spies. No one does an interview like Jason Spies. 
Jason Spies is the most trusted voice in the Bakken. Love listening to Jason Spies on the radio, and if I miss him there, I catch him online. You know, I don't know what justifies being placed in history books, Jason, but in my book, it's in there. <laughs> this is a good thing. Is your boss watching this? Nothing. You need a raise. Welcome back to Coffee and Capitalism Radio, heard on the Crude Life Media Network. My name is Jason Spies, and I'm your host today. Up next, Dr. Jerry Bailey with Petroblock. Is another thing that we've gotten going is to get involved in this new blockchain technology. We we decided to take a lead in that as well, where uh, you know we can start using uh, better means of uh, digitizing all of our results and our activities uh, across the uh, across the globe, so that we can be better uh, in tune and able to contact with our suppliers and with our purchasers and with our uh, operators in this business. So we've, uh, we've launched an initiative where we're developing a good blockchain uh, approach like many banks now, uh, people use, and you know, uh, so many industries are, are getting involved where people can join in and have access to your uh, non-proprietary data who can do transactions across uh, international boundaries uh, in real time that we can stop the repetitiveness of so much accounting and, and get things more uh, computerized in the system. We've already got uh, PMEX from Mexico to join in with us. We've got uh, one of the uh, uh, oil companies out of the Ukraine, which seems like a long way away, but they want to join in on this, and we're talking with others. And we're going to hopefully be uh, uh, another good leader in the technology of utilizing the blockchain system and the uh, cryptocurrency situation for the oil and gas industry. So that's kind of a little sideline deal, but it's going to make our business uh, more uh, cost effective. It's going to improve our bottom line, and hopefully along the way we can we can help some more people. So that's kind of another interesting bit that uh, we're involved in at the moment. I'm glad you brought that up. I did want to ask you about blockchain, but I didn't know if it would, was appropriate uh, for the for the discussion. I'm, I'm glad, and like I said, I'm really glad you 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 bringing this up because I, I did have a question. Is this something that you guys are developing? Is this is this your guys' blockchain, or is it a blockchain that you guys someone else has developed and you guys are are, are a part of? No, we're developing this. We have uh, formed a collaboration with a group called First Bitcoin Capital, and uh, that, there was a press release on that some months back. I don't have the exact date, but. Uh, we engaged them uh, for over half a million dollars to develop this for us, and they are actively working on that. Where they're putting together all of the, uh, you know, the, the computer programs and uh, the structure, so that there is a system where people will be able to track their product or track our product. And we can uh, we can sell things and and just interact. It's not a mythical thing. People people get uh, confused about what is this blockchain. It's nothing more than uh, I like to think of it as a railroad train going by with a lot of boxcars full of information in every one of them. And along the way, people might need to pull out something from a particular boxcar as to do with to make a sale or to make a purchase or to do some uh, service uh, work. And it, it's like a, a big file room that more than one person has access to everybody has access to the front door but inside there's dozens of uh, file cabinets if you will with different information and only certain people have keys to certain file cabinets but among it we can all share a lot of information and things that we now do with uh, brokers and lawyers and accountants a lot of it can be done more expeditiously and easier so it's our development that we're directing toward the oil and gas business and we have uh, Deloitte, uh, the financial group out of uh, Toronto, is also giving us advice on this. So we and we've got some pretty pretty good uh, folks involved, and we're we're doing that as just another uh, uh, aspect of our business. But that you know that's a that's a subset of what we do. But it, it could turn out to be a very uh, attractive thing to many companies who can just join in with us as uh, as members, if you would, of our of our blockchain system. How can somebody uh, become a part of that blockchain system or, or learn more about it? Uh, do you guys have a website? Do you guys uh, direct, uh, have an email address? I guess, what uh, 
What do do, do you have something that people can find out? This collaboration we've uh, developed is being uh, uh, operated under the name of Petroblog, P E T R O B L O Q, and there is a website you can look up Petroblog. But you can also go to uh, Petrotech dot Energy, uh, and either way, there's there's uh, comments there how you can contact and get directly into our blockchain uh, folks that are handling this, and uh, they would be glad to talk uh, uh, in detail how anyone might uh, participate. Now, again, I I understand what's going on to the tune to where I didn't realize that this interview when when we scheduled it this morning, it was going to be one of those interviews that I am going to remember for the rest of my life because you're on the forefront of two things here. For, for one, you're on the forefront of your proprietary hydrocarbon, you know, sand oil extraction um, technology. I mean, that's that's innovative in, in itself to the tune to where I wondered if you guys backdoored into it. And then this here with the petrol block, and that's P-E-R, P-E-T-R-O, B L O Q block yeah. uh, that yeah. I see where you're going to be not only at the forefront on that in the energy sector, but overall in the entire industry, because this is still a relatively new technology or maybe it's not. I guess how, how much um, history has been involved with this for you guys to, to say, you know what, there, there's enough there to move ahead on something like this uh i guess is is there enough was there enough history to be satisfied with uh everything or is this kind of uh you know we're we're sticking our toe in the water a little bit <laughs> well it's become a it's become a catch all word so to speak but the the idea has been around a long time i think banks for one were maybe some of the first involved where if you go into uh to seek a loan or a mortgage Used to, you were just talking to your local banker, but now they can sit there in a matter of minutes and go on their computer. They can find out your credit history and everything about you all across the world. They can contact other banks and, and see if they can't help you. Uh, I mean, if one can't help you, another can. So they've been using this uh, uh, collaborative uh, way to uh, communicate and to share information. And so the idea is not, I don't think, that new. It's just that people said, well, heck, if it can be done in one way or in one industry, it can be done in others. I saw the other day where uh, a lot of people who are involved in, in water production or water cleanup or, or water needs around the world, they're starting a water blockchain. So people have who have any, any interest in water can also get in on that and find other like minds. It's no different than the, there's, you know, industries like the... Uh, natural gas processors or the National Re Petroleum uh, Refiners Association. A lot of industry groups that have always kind of cooperated and shared information. Uh, I think this is just a way to, again, bring us up more into current technology and ways to share that information and help it in our businesses. So uh, it's uh, the idea is not totally new, but we saw, well, hey, if oil and gas is a global industry, I mean, I buy, if I buy a tanker of oil, say, out of Africa, it may, it may travel up to Rotterdam and have to be checked and check the analysis, and then it's got to be shipped to Houston, and from there it gets unloaded in the tank. It's got to move from there to whatever, Salt Lake City or something. But with this system, you now used to use all of that took days and days because there's so many documents and people involved, and then you got to transfer the money across international boundaries. Well, if everybody can key into the same uh, digital program, I can tell you at any moment when that oil left, where it is, who's doing anything with it, uh, where is the paperwork, where are the documents, where is the money, uh, how are funds being transferred, all these things in real time. So if you just look at it, it's just a, a more efficient and more up-to-date current way to utilize uh, communication technologies that are now available. To listen to the full-length interview with Dr. Jerry Bailey from PetroBlock or to listen to other Coffee and Capitalism features, visit thecrudelife.com. That's thecrudelife.com. Coffee and Capitalism Radio is part of the Crude Life Media Network. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. All of those social media links are available at thecrudelife.com. My name is Jason Spies, and this is Coffee and Capitalism Radio, heard on the Crude Life Media Network. The tide came in, honey, you went out. The tide went out, honey, you came in. The tide came in, honey, you went out. The California dreamer, she's lost in the wind. The music.
Music on today's program is written and performed by the Moody River Band. The Moody River Band has a new album hitting the downloadable streets on April 1st. For more information on the Moody River Band, their links, and their music, visit thecrudelife.com. That's thecrudelife.com and click on the Musicians tab. This is the Moody River Band. Over the past few months, I've told you about how unbelievable Hatch coaching is. Don't just take my word for it. Listen to what Christy Huber, president of the United Way of Cass Clay, says about Hatch coaching. I think it's a really exciting time for our young leaders today because um, leaders like Eric Hatch are changing the face of what it means to lead an organization or what it means to lead a brand. He's changing that. For many years, I think that the, the gold standard of leadership has been somebody who is very polished and has it all together or seemingly has it all together and throughout the years. Um, I think that we've now, especially with technology and social media, we are drawn to what's real. To find out more about Hatch Coaching or to have Eric Hatch speak at your event or company, visit HatchCoaching.com. That's HatchCoaching.com. Or call 701-212-1572. That's 701-212-1572. Meridian Energy Group of Belfield, North Dakota, is building the most technologically advanced oil refinery on the planet, the Davis Refinery, a project designed to achieve emission control levels the industry has never seen before. The Davis Refinery, working for North Dakota. Meridian Energy Group, Inc.com. Mark your calendars for June 15th. That's the Bach and Barbecue. Mark your calendars today, June 15th, the Bach and Barbecue, coming to Dickinson, North Dakota. Welcome back to Coffee and Capitalism Radio, heard in the Crude Life Media Network. My name is Jason Spies, and I'm your host today. Up next, we talk with Chase Broussard with Dealmakers. This is Chase Broussard. I'm the president of Dealmakers out of Houston, Texas. Chase Broussard, Dealmakers out of Houston, Texas. Welcome to the Crude Life. How's life going today? It's going great, man. Uh, it's a Tuesday. I'm um, live on a phone call with you, and we're discussing what I love the most and have a passion for, the industry, oil and gas. Yeah, we kind of had a little sidebar conversation about our passion. We we're a couple of energy enthusiasts. I explained mine, which is the um, the whole capitalism side, the whole developing culture side, even to the point of, you know, I believe what's going on right now is going to be read about in history books by our kids' kids and our grands' kids, et cetera. So what, what, what is it that... Uh, you, you like to tell people when it comes to why are you such an energy enthusiast and why do you have so much passion for the oil and gas industry? Uh, I kind of like to explain it to those who like like muscle cars, right? Uh, I flowed wells for a living. I literally took the raw material out of the ground and passed it through equipment that I uh, since I consider myself an expert of and, and got to separate that and, and see how it functions in society from this, like I'm looking at this calculator right here, it's made of plastic. There's oil in this, you know? It's, it's in everything. It is neat, isn't it, how it not only powers our lives, but it is in so many different things. And the whole capitalism side and the whole developing of cultures is, is really neat when it comes to the energy industry. Talk to me a little bit about how you got involved with the energy industry. Were, were you born into it? Are you second generation? Or did you come out of uh, a different industry and then get into that through that particular industry like we're finding a lot of engineers and tech people are today. Uh, how, how did you get into the industry? So when I was a senior in high school, um, I was 18 years old, and I started working for uh, what was National Oil well at the time, uh, which is now National Oil well Varco. And I was just a regular old mechanic helper working around the shop, you know, making my way to try to uh, get into an industry because I was graduating soon. Um, well, that didn't pan out. I ended up joining the military. And once I got out of the military, I got back into it because I, I guess you could say I'm, I'm a generation, second generation, because all of my family is in the oil field one way or another. And I just followed their footsteps after serving my country. Chase Broussard, Dealmakers, you said serving your country. Thank you for your service. What part of the military were you in? I was in the Army for seven years, 10 months. Did that prepare you? When I, when I interviewed Brian Lash from Target Logistics, 
Uh, the military was a big client of his with the man camps or the, I forget, crew camps are called now, and that sort of thing. What? How was the transition from oil and gas and, and, and military? A lot of people say it is very similar nowadays versus how it was you know, 20 years ago. You got the stories of the rough neck slinging chains and everything, but nowadays they almost say like a lot of the um, – you know, the, the different oil and gas sites very much reflect how the military uh, infrastructure is done. 100% agree with you with that. Yeah, you know, it, It's a brotherhood, right? Uh, and, and I don't want to say it like a sexist, but like it's a brother-sisterhood thing, right? Because in the military, you have guys and gals. But when, I, when you come together and you all share the same common goal, whether it's serving your country together, right? Or you're out serving your, your company, right? And, and the industry by working uh, at the well sites. And, and you develop a camaraderie. You're with those guys more than you're with your, your family, so to speak. And um, it's, it's similar in nature because of those uh, small aspects, you know, where you're you're out and about on a daily basis with these guys. And they're from all walks of life, people you meet from all walks of life. But it's a small world, just like in the military. You're running the people. You're like, man, I served as you in, in this country. And, you know, they're in a different job title or a different, they're with a different business, you know. Chase Broussard, deal makers. It's interesting about your background when it comes to the energy, and then of course the military. And now you know you're you're working deal makers. Talk to me a little bit about that company and how that is that you're. You know, it's, it sounds to me like you're able to talk very well with within people in the industry. So talk to me about your customers. Who are your customers, and uh, what it is you're doing for them currently? Um, so <clears throat> my my number one customer is uh, XRI Blue. Um, they're uh, a company out of uh, Midland, Odessa, and I have uh, a number of other companies, J6 Energy Services, um, I'm working with, uh, I've worked with Halliburton and Cash and Bill and anything. Um, I'm working with private equity groups. I'm actually working with, um, I'm getting ready to work with an oil company and to help them raise funds for some big projects uh, upcoming. And, and how I got into this, I guess, I guess it's just who I am, right? Um, I make deals. And that's what I do. I'm a salesman. Um, and I'm proud of it. I'm very proud of who I am as a salesman. And my goal when I opened up my business was to build equipment, right? But opening a business with, with the minimum cash flow, and I looked at the business up, and I said, you know what? Well, in order for me to do this, I'm going to have to X amount of cash, and I'm just coming out into the industry to try to be, you know, an entrepreneur. So i got to find a way to do it. Well, how do you get – how do you build a business? you got to have sales. So I developed DealMakers because – I was told by a very successful CEO who uh, I worked right underneath, and, and he took me under his wing, and he's my mentor today, Joe Campo Feliz. Um, he told me, you know, hey, you're good at making deals. Go make them, you know. Go put them together. Go make deals. And they laid me off. And it was the most boring thing that a CEO could have told me because guess what I did? I embraced that, and I ran with it. And as we sit here today, I'm very successful. Um, I 7 x my company last year on my first year of business, so things are going great, man. I think that's fantastic. I remember talking to a guy in the Bakken, up in the Bakken oil fields in its early days there, where I said, man, somebody could just make a living figuring out deals for different companies, networking different people together, because these energy companies and the midstream companies, they had new problems. And not only new problems, but because there was a new generation of people that trying to vet and trying to figure out who they could trust and who they couldn't trust became a commodity out there. <laughs> that's a good point, man. I mean, that, that's so true. I, I faced it. But you know what? You know what? You know how you win that? You just be a real person. You be a real. You got to be real. You can't. You can't be showing the people that you're dealing with. You can't constantly show them that oh, there's the shady things that go on within industries. It's not just the oil and gas industry. You, whatever you say, right? All you have in this world is is your word, man. You got to stand behind who you are, your name, and your word. You got to do that. And I embrace that. So I can relate to what you're saying, man. The vetting process is amazing. I embrace that vetting process without even realizing it. But at the same time, like how, you know, there's natural-born detectives and there's natural-born athletes and there's all these other things. It sounds to me like your pedigree has prepared you for this because doing what you do, the average person couldn't do. I mean, you grew up, like you said, all the way back to high school, you started being introduced to the energy industry. So you've you've got a... Uh, very formidable time of your life that was energy influenced, and then you know you talked about the military, same thing, and then that, of course, like we like we talked about earlier with the context, much of the oil and gas industry is very uh, mi militaristic now in terms of the kind of the in protocols and the infrastructures and a lot of those different things. You know, and you try to go to a well site just unannounced, it ain't happening. It is not happening. So, but. <laughs> 
So what, what I'm getting at is that it seems to me that you have been able to figure out a way to make a living in the oil and gas industry based on who you are and what the industry needs that not everybody can do. So uh, congratulations to that. What, what, what type of a reaction are you getting from people? Because it is a new concept, but at the same time, it's the oldest concept there is. Well, <clears throat> most people don't have a problem with it. I'll tell you this. The companies that love my services um, are the companies that don't have the time to continuously search and look for opportunities when they're, when they're purchasing, right? Their, their, their purchasing power is there and it, it operates, but I'm in a different aspect. I go and find the deals because that's what my business is, is to find the best deal for my customer so in return, their service is connected and they have what they need. To listen to the full-length interview with Chase Broussard from Dealmakers or to listen to other Coffee and Capitalism features, visit thecrudelife.com. That's thecrudelife.com. Coffee and Capitalism Radio is part of the Crude Life Media Network. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. All of those social media links are available at thecrudelife.com. My name is Jason Spies, and this is Coffee and Capitalism Radio, heard on the Crude Life Media Network. Time to let it go, time to cut it, I'll lose. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. A blue hat's in this brown shoes. I got this blue hat, brown shoes. A old hat's telling new news. Which is round around on broken rules. The music on today's program is written and performed by the Moody River Band. The Moody River Band has a new album hitting the downloadable streets on April 1st. For more information on the Moody River Band, their links, and their music, Visit thecrudelife.com. That's thecrudelife.com and click on the musicians tab. This is the Moody River Band. Over the past few months, I've told you about how unbelievable Hatch Coaching is. Well, don't just take my word for it. Listen to what Greg Tavine of Emerging Prairies has to say about Hatch Coaching. Yeah, I mean, this guy gets people laughing. He gets people thinking. He, he's somebody that challenges and inspires. And, and what I think is so beautiful about Eric is he's real. I think the number one thing that I look for in speakers when we bring them into our platforms is that they're that person 365 days a year. Eric is not just a speaker on a stage. That's that's who he is at the grocery store. That's who he is when he's at the mall. Uh, But but Eric is somebody that lives his values each and every day. And I, I think we can all respect that. To find out more about Hatch Coaching or to have Eric Hatch speak at your event or company, visit HatchCoaching.com. That's HatchCoaching.com. Or call 701-212-1572. That's 701-212-1572. Meridian Energy Group of Belfield, North Dakota, is building the most technologically advanced oil refinery on the planet, the Davis Refinery a project designed to achieve emission control levels the industry has never seen before. The Davis Refinery, working for North Dakota. Meridian Energy Group, Inc.com. June 15th, save the date. That's June 15th, the Bakken Barbecue in Dickinson, North Dakota. That's June 15th. Be sure to save the date today, and we'll see you June 15th at the Bakken Barbecue in Dickinson, North Dakota. Welcome back to Coffee and Capitalism Radio, heard of the Crude Life Media Network. My name is Jason Spies, and I'm your host today. Up next, Rob Ryan, billionaire entrepreneur with Roaring Lions Ranch. We are rolling okay, with Rob Ryan of Roaring Lion Ranch, LLC. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. What is the Roaring Lion Ranch? It's actually a ranch in uh, western Montana, and I, I uh, raise entrepreneurs. Yeah. You raise entrepreneurs? I raise entrepreneurs. No kidding. I have an organization called Entrepreneurs. America, that we run out of the ranch, and we've been doing that for 17 years now, and uh, 
I've joined forces with a group here called Hero Partners, and we're trying to establish hero companies. We call them hero companies all throughout the United States. Hero companies are companies that can transform their environment. They, you know, they become a, an engine of entrepreneurship because they're so successful. So we have companies in the Bakken fields. Mm -hmm. We have companies in uh, Rockton, Illinois. We have companies in Beloit, Wisconsin. We have companies all over the place. Um, we're very selective in the companies that we work with. Uh, but then we go in and we try to accelerate their growth, dramatically accelerate their growth. So the dream I have is to impact the United States through entrepreneurship, to have millions of entrepreneurs spread out through the uh, United States, but not in areas that already have entrepreneurs like Silicon Valley and Boston. Those already have engines of entrepreneurship. I'm looking to do it through the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the dream is to do it in the Buffaloes, the Rockton, Illinois, the Detroits, you know, the places that would, would be good to have them. Sure. You know, um, Grassroots entrepreneurship. Grassroots entrepreneurship. Okay. And I work with mostly entrepreneurs that don't have fancy degrees and fancy diplomas, but have a work ethic, and they know how to build uh, businesses, and they're off, you know, doing that, and we help them. What would you say your background is primarily? Um, my background, educationally, is math and physics, you know, so science background. But then I became an entrepreneur, and I've grown several multi-billion dollar companies from scratch. So I've, <laughs> I've developed a process uh, on how to grow a company from scratch to billions of, of dollars, and I've done it several times, four times. So it's not, you could call the first one perhaps accident, but it's hard to, to call all of them, mm -hmm. you know, accident. That's interesting, your background, science and math, I think right away, linear thinker, okay? Somebody who's good with organization, somebody who's good at that, but to be, to, you need sales somehow, and that takes an abstract-minded person. Do you possess both, or do you just surround yourself with the uh, compliment? No, I, I possess both. Okay, because they, yeah. they are out there. You know? yeah, yeah, I absolutely possess both. Um, I think people would tell you that I'm uh, incredibly creative uh, person and sort of model things across many dimensions, but I'm also capable of going into relationship selling and, and you know, marketing and sales and that, in that mm -hmm. fashion. And that's sort of left brain, right brain, two, two skills exactly. that, are, that are unified. I think to be a, a great entrepreneur, you have to ha have that ability. I mean, you have to be able to model things and then at the same time do the relationships, you know, at the the same time, and I said, yeah, I do have that. I look for that in my entrepreneurs as well. Where does family play into the uh, uh, entrepreneur game? Uh, family, you know, my wife and I have been married for 45 years. We got married in school, you know, as undergraduates in, in school, and she's been you know, with me through everything. She's sort of the half that keeps me out of trouble. She's a lawyer, and she keeps me out of trouble. I, I, in 45 years, I've never actually read a legal brief, and as David would actually tell you, I always tell people, if Terry's name isn't on it, then forget about giving it to me, because there's no way I'm going to read it or even sign it in a million years. I, I didn't just, realize she literally kept you out of trouble. Oh, kept, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, and we've stayed remarkably free from you know trouble because she reads everything and, and understands everything. So we're a team. And my entrepreneurs become like children. You know, they, I become Uncle Rod to their children. Uh, and I've got, I've got entrepreneurs all over the country. Uh, it's, it's been a real passion. To listen to the full-length interview with Rob Ryan with Roaring Lions Ranch or to listen to other Coffee and Capitalism features, visit thecrudelife.com. That's thecrudelife.com. Coffee and Capitalism Radio is part of the Crude Life Media Network. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. All of those social media links are available at thecrudelife.com. My name is Jason Spies, and this is Coffee and Capitalism Radio, heard on the Crude Life Media Network.
Music on today's program is written and performed by the Moody River Band. The Moody River Band has a new album hitting the downloadable streets on April 1st. For more information on the Moody River Band, their links, and their music, visit thecrudelife.com. That's thecrudelife.com and click on the Musicians tab. This is the Moody River Band. Jump over the candlestick. Why don't you do now? Like the millionaires do. Put your stuff on the market. So you can make a million too. And that concludes this week's episode of Coffee and Capitalism Radio, heard on the Crude Life Media Network. For a full list of today's guest and interview, visit our website, thecrudelife.com. That's thecrudelife.com. We'll be back next week on this radio station at this time. For a full list of our radio affiliates and other media partners, please visit our website, thecrudelife.com. That's thecrudelife.com. My name is Jason Spies, and from the staff here at Coffee and Capitalism Radio, we're asking you to be happy, make money, and give back. Thanks for joining us this week, folks. Sign on on front porch saying, hot stuff will say, why don't you do now? Like the millionaires do. Put your stuff on the market. You can make a million, too. Seems like no matter who I talk to in the world of business these days, people are telling me about the success of Hatch Coaching. Listen to what Jeff Schatz, superintendent of the Fargo Public Schools, has to say about Eric Hatch and Hatch coaching. I just thought that his story uh, about how he talks about the struggles that he and his family went through and having children and how, you know, everybody has a hot mess and how, how do you deal with that in life. And I just thought that really resonates well with, you know, folks. And so um, I thought that would be a great message for everybody to hear. Well, then beyond that, I've also seen Eric um, do uh, some of the other things that he does with emceeing and and leading other types of things that he does. He does coaching, I know, with students um, where the principals have hired him to come in and do that. So I just extended that opportunity for him to be the emcee, too. He was very well received. For more information, call 701-212-1572 or visit coachingwithhatch.com. That's coachingwithhatch.com. Meridian Energy Group of Belfield, North Dakota, is building the most technologically advanced oil refinery on the planet, the Davis Refinery, a project designed to achieve emission control levels the industry has never seen before. The Davis Refinery, working for North Dakota. MeridianEnergyGroupInc.com. Jason Spies, the most trusted voice in the Bakken. Let's bring in Jason Spies, who is a multimedia journalist in North Dakota. Jason, what's your thought on this? My dad always listens to Jason Spies. No one does an interview like Jason Spies. Jason Spies is the most trusted voice in the Bakken. Love listening to Jason Spies on the radio, and if I miss him there, I catch him online. You know, I don't know what justifies being placed in history books, Jason, but in my book, it's in there. (laughs) This is a good thing. Is your boss watching this? You need a raise.